Hello everyone, this is Neeti Kumari, studying in 8th sem IEC from Sri Vankateshwara College of Engineering, Bengaluru. Today I am here to give seminar presentation on real-time implementation of face recognition and emotion recognition in a humanoid robot using a convolutional neural network under the guidance of Dr. Shalini V, Assistant Professor, Department of IEC. So these are the contents of today's seminar topic. So the first one is introduction, related background, objectives, working or implementation, future enhancement, conclusion, and references. So coming to introduction, in recent years, there has been significant progress in the field of robotics and a humanoid robot. These robots have a human-like appearance and can interact with humans, including recognizing faces and responding to commands. Various face recognition technologies have been developed, such as principal component analysis and convolutional neural networks, which are important for social assistative robots. Apart from face recognition, emotion recognition is also essential for effective human-robot interaction. This can be done based on facial expressions, speech, and text. Various studies have used different methods to recognize facial emotions, including fuzzy system, support vector machines, and deep learning algorithms. However, these studies have mostly focused on either face recognition or emotion recognition separately, and few have combined them into a single recognition system. Furthermore, the position of the human as an object of interaction has not been considered in most studies. This paper proposes a recognition system that combines face recognition and emotion recognitions to improve the robot's capacity for human-robot interaction. The study uses primary data obtained from male and female students, including those wearing glasses and a hijab. The proposed system is embedded in the robot and can recognize the human's name, emotion, and position in real time. The study also compares the performance of well-known CNN architectures such as VGG16 and AlexNet. So the paper also proposes a method for measuring the distance between the object face and robot's positions to determine where the human is. So the next one is related background. So the first one is face recognition using principal component analysis method. So it is one of the simplest and most effective PCA approaches used in face recognition system is called Eigen Face Approach. So this approach uses a method called Eigen Faces to recognize faces. So Eigen Faces are a small set of important features that are extracted from a group of training image. So to recognize a new face, the image is projected to the Eigen face space and then compared to the known individual's positions in the same space. So based on the similarity, the system can classify the new face as one of the known individuals. So co compared to other face recognition, uh, this approach has some advantages because it is simple and fast and it does not require complex calculations and can recognize faces quickly. So it basically involves two steps. So the first one is initialization process. The second one is the recognition process. So coming to initialization process, the eigenfaces are calculated from the training set by identifying the highest eigenvalues and selecting only the M images that define the face space. The eigenfaces can be updated or recalculated as new faces are encountered. So these all are the system to compare new faces to known faces and identify individuals based on their positions in the m-dimensional space. So coming to recognition process. So to recognize a new face uh, using the eigenface approach, the system performs the following steps. First, it will calculate a set of weights by projecting the input image onto each of the m eigenfaces. It checks if the image is a face at all by verifying if the weight pattern is sufficiently close to a free space. If the image is a face, then the weight pattern is classified as either a known person or unknown person. If the same unknown person's face is seen several times, then the system updates the eigen face. The next is convolutional neural network face recognition system in real time. So here, the proposed system is divided into four main parts. The first one is user interface, the second one is enroll enrollment module, and the third one is the verification module, and the fourth one is the system database. So here, the 
uh, system starts by collecting the face samples of users using a camera module. So in the enrollment module, the collected face samples are pre-processed and stored in the train folder. The verification module includes training and testing of a CNN model. So during face recognition, the user face is extracted from a continuous stream of a video and compared with the train model. So based on the prediction of the CNN model, the result, the result will be generated here. The next one is the objectives. So the study aims to merge face recognition and emotion recognition into a single unit to enable robots to interact with humans in real time, recognizing their names, emotions, and positions. Designing a real-time CNN-based face recognition system that extracts features for recognitions. The next objective is developing an emotion recognition system that classifies human emotions into different categories in real time. The next one is evaluating the performance of the system in terms of recognition accuracy, processing time, and response time, and comparing it with the existing systems and models. So coming to working or implementations. So these are the component design of humanoid robot. So in this study, several pieces of hardware are used uh, to support the implementations of a humanoid robot, such as webcam, JXO Servo 60kg, Arduino, the Raspberry Pi, and the dot matrix. So coming to webcam, here the face images are captured using a webcam uh, as a robot eyes. Then the JXO servo 60 kg. So JXO servo functions as the neck of the robot. So it can move to follow the positions of the human face after detecting and recognizing it. Next one is the Arduino. So Arduino boards can be used to control the motors of a humanoid robot. It can move the limbs, head, or any other part of the robot. The next one is the Raspberry Pi. So Raspberry Pi boards can be used to control the movements of the robot and process data from sensors, cameras, and other peripherals. The next one is the dot matrix. So dot matrix is used to present characters such as lines and circles. Such characters represent the form of eyes. So moving on. So the next one is the data set collection and the data pre-processing. So in data set collection, it is used, the first step is to collect a data set of images for training and testing the CNN. The researchers used pictures of faces from 30 students at universities for the study. They took the pictures using a webcam that had a resolution of 640 into 482 pixels. They used the pictures to recognize emotions on people's faces. The students also provided information about their emotions. To add more variations to the data, the researchers also used a data set from Kegel. They used five different emotions for the study, smile, angry, surprise, neutral, and sad. The next one is the data pre-processing. The collector training data and test data are then pre-processed. This processing, pre-processing includes cropping each image to remove any background or regions other than face. So after the cropping process, image resizing is carried out by changing the image size. This is done to reduce the size of the data set using during training. Use during training. The next step is to perform image augmentations to make the image variations fit a specific range. So coming to the flow chart of face and emotion recognitions. So as you can see on the screen, so this is the flow chart of face and emotion recognitions. Here, the servo moves in search of a face. If the camera detects the face, it will move on to the next step. And if the camera doesn't detect the face, it will go back to the previous step. So face data has two types of data. So the first one is the training data and testing data. So in training data, CNN layers are used. And in testing data, CNN models are used. If faces and emotions are recognized, it will calculate the distance and send the recognition results. So these are the steps to face and emotion recognition. Also, the study used a convolutional neural networks, as you can see on the figure. So which is basically a type of neural network, which is inspired by the visual perceptron of living creatures and is designed for recognition tasks. So in CNN, layers are arranged in 
three dimensional structure consisting of width, height, and depth. The depth refers to the number of layers in each unit. So CNN layers can be categorized into two types, uh, the image feature extraction layer at the top, which includes layers of neurons connected to the previous layer's local area, and the classification layer, which includes fully connected layers of neurons. The next one is the pulling layer. So this layer is in charge of reducing dimensionality. It aids in reducing the amount of computing power required to process the data. So pulling can be divided into two types, maximum pulling and average pulling. So the maximum value from the area covered by the kernel on the image is returned by max pulling. Next one is the fully connected layer. So the fully connected layer works with the flattened input, which means that each input is coupled to every neuron. Moving on, so this is the AlexNet architecture. So in AlexNet, it is basically a type of convolutional neural network architecture that has eight layers consisting of five convolution layers followed by max pooling layers and three fully connected layers. So AlexNet uses the RLU activation function, which has been shown to have better training performance compared to other activation functions. The AlexNet architecture was created with large scale image data sets. Each convolution layer consists of convolutional filters and a non-linear activation function RLU. The pulling layers are used to perform max pulling. Input size is fixed due to the presence of fully connected layers. So it has 60 million characteristics in all. Moving on. So these are the future enhancement. So the first one is security. So face detection and emotional recognitions can be used in security system to identify and track individuals in real time. The next one is entertainment. So face detection and emotion recognitions can be used in the entertainment industry to create more personalized experiences for users. The next one is it is used for healthcare. So in face detection and emotion recognitions can be used in healthcare to monitor patients' emotional states and provide personalized treatment. The next one is marketing. So face detection and emotion recognitions can be used in marketing to analyze consumer behavior and preferences. So the next one is the conclusion part. So here, the VGG16 model performs better than other models in detecting and recognizing both faces and emotions with success rate of 100% and 73% respectively. For VGG16, the smallest average loss of face and emotion recognition is 0.011 and 0.1875 respectively. It shows promising results for enhancing human-robot interaction. So the system also needs to be repaired and upgraded in future work. So these are the conclusions. So next one is the references. So these are the papers which I have referred for my seminar topic. That's all. Thank you. Thank you for watching.